So what you're looking at right now is the dashboard of PRTG once you've installed it. And I'm not gonna show you the installation process because it's so easy, it would be insulting if I showed it to you. It's literally download the file, next, 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 finish, and you're up and running at that dashboard. But the key, uh, and, and this, is, this, this part is huge, what you install it on and where you install it is of infinite importance. First off, what you install it on. When, when I first got started with PRTG years and years ago, um, I installed it on some junk machine in the closet, which it works. I mean, that's the great thing is initially you'll get it on there, but the more stuff you add to it, the more sensors you start monitoring, the higher the load is. And then it, it, you'll start getting false alerts of things being down and, and things like that because the machine just can't keep up with the monitoring. And, and the only reason I tell you this is because what I initially installed it on was one of those little, you know, the, the you, you know, the little boxes you can just throw in the rack. It's like it got like a like you can't believe it's a pro It's like I can't believe it's not butter. It's like I can't believe it's a computer, right? And you, and you just kind of like oh maybe that'll work. It needs to run Windows well, right? It needs to have enough resources to keep this thing running, or otherwise you're doing yourself a disservice. The second thing, and let me draw this up. The second thing is where you install it is hugely important. And, and let me give, give you the idea. This is, uh, here's the architecture of PRTG in literally you know, five minutes or less, right? This is your initial installation server. We'll call this the host, right? And when you first install it, two things get installed with it. The web interface, which is what you were just looking at with that dashboard, right? And the probe, that's the workhorse. This is the piece of PRTG that will start going out to the different devices and checking in on them every X amount of seconds, right? How you doing? Is this service running? Is the memory, you know, report back on your network utilization and so on and so forth. Now, it just so happens that I am currently using the cloud version of PRTG, which means the server that's running the web interface and the initial probe is somewhere far away. And that poses a problem because I'm gonna start using, I'm gonna show you how to set up monitoring. I'm gonna do so by, by using my, my house, right? I have more devices in my house than most small businesses have. So, so let, let's just say right there embedded into the drywall of my house is my router, right? Initially, this is a problem. We've got PRTG cloud sitting out here, which is the host, right? It's, it's, it's running the web interface. It's got a probe, but how is it going to get eyes into my home, right? It's going to run into my firewall and my firewall is going to say, you are not allowed here. Now I have an option. I can go in there and I can start saying, okay, let me poke holes in the firewall, but who wants to do that, first of all? But, but second of all, I, with, with, with what? All these different devices that are inside? I mean, I probably have in my house close to 100 devices that could use monitoring. And I, I, I know that sounds absurd and it's, it is, but, but I, I'm not gonna poke that many holes in the firewall and set up all these NAT translations. Instead, that's where you come to the remote probe. So in my house, I'll have a workstation. It could be a Windows, you know, Windows 10. It could be, in my case, it is Windows 10. It could be a server, but it's actually sitting in the little MDF of my house. I'm gonna install a remote probe, which puts the eyes of PRTG inside of my home. Now this can do all of the monitoring and report it back to the web interface over here. And this is the architecture, the simple yet beautiful architecture of PRTG. You have the master server, if you will, right? And all these remote probes, it could be at all the different offices, could be the different sites, all, wherever you wanna put them. You can put as many remote probes as you want and they all report back to the web interface. Let me take you there. Now, when I first came here, you might've looked and said, well, where did these eight sensors come from? Well, let me show you. This, this is actually what I make my homepage on just about every PRTG install. I, I don't use the dashboard very much. I want to see the devices and what's going on. Um, and you can see right here, I have root hosted probe. This represents the probe running on the first installed server that I have. Now, if I expand this out, you'll see two things actually. Let me expand this out a little further. You see the probe device, which is the probe monitoring itself. It's saying, hey, you know, right now PRTG is doing okay. Core health 100%, probe health 100%. Like we are, we are good as a server that is doing the monitoring. Then right below that, you can see I actually, and this is one something I added uh, uh, previously, I created a group called Remote Firewalls and set up monitoring for a firewall where I can see the bandwidth being transmitted right here. Now, this, this remote firewall is being monitored from Europe or wherever that, that, 
that probe is being installed because I'm using the hosted version of PRTG. I actually have the server sitting in Europe sending, sending re monitoring requests, SNMP requests across the ocean, across the satellite to this, this firewall over here. Huge that you understand that because it really impacts how you design your monitoring. Check this out. This right here is our hosted probe. I'll just put HP, right? Our hosted probe. And it's actually coming and hitting the firewall on the outside. Now that gives me a big advantage to having the firewall monitored from the inside. Now, why is that? Think about that for, for, for just a second. Why would I have an advantage uh, monitoring it from the outside than, than the inside? Well, by monitoring from the outside, I can see if the internet connection is actually online. If I'm, if I'm sitting here at my desk, you know, there's Jeremy doing his day-to-day -day stuff, and I'm monitoring the firewall here, and the internet connection foom, goes down, I, I may not get an alarm, right? I, the, it might say, oh yeah, the firewall's fine, life is good. Now, now hopefully we've added a few other sensors in there to, to detect if the internet is all, offline, but, but that's, that's why I'm saying the, the where you install PRTG and your remote probe and how you use those different things is infinitely important because it can lead to you getting accurate alerts, right? I want to have a probe monitoring that firewall from the outside because that's testing the internet connection and everything up to the firewall, but I might also want to have it monitored from the inside because it will help me determine whether is my firewall offline? You know, this is, this is me trying to figure it out. Is my firewall offline? Well, looking at my, my remote probe right here, no, we're, we're just fine. However, it looks like the internet connection is, is down, so I need to contact the ISP. This is why knowing what's what like strategizing a little bit instead of just starting to add a whole bunch of sensors before you get there with the local and remote probe is hugely important. Okay, so the last thing I want to do in this video is show you how to install a remote probe. This will this will get us going because again, right now all we've got is one probe, which is somewhere in Europe, right? It's uh, that's doing the monitoring. I want to add one more. I've got a PC sitting in my house right now. Matter of fact, I have a remote desktop session to that PC. Here's how you do it. Instead of having an installer, although you could go that way, you literally go to the URL that accesses the PRTG server from the thing that you want to be your remote probe, right? So I'll paste it in there. And in my case, it's kitsimd.myprtg.com. That's the, the remote system. Okay, so I logged in here, or I am logging into that remote probe. And same perspective, right? This is, again, I'm just seeing the dashboard right now. It's through that web interface. I can either, now this, this handsome looking fellow is like, you want a remote probe, right? So I could, I could click that right there, but let's say the handsome looking fellow isn't there. I can go to setup, go to the optional downloads right here, and you've got the remote probe installer, right? There is, you know, there is a mobile app for the iOS and all that kind of stuff. Click on prepare a download. What it's doing is it's actually going to download this, cust it, it created a custom installer that will report back to my PR to, PRTG hosted instance and add itself doing that. Watch, watch how this works. All right, downloads complete. I'm going to double click the installer and it becomes just like a normal piece of software that we're installing on this machine, right? Install next. And that, that by the way, is about as easy as it is to install PRTG. So, so while, while that's installing, let me explain this remote probe will now show itself in the web interface and I can start adding sensors to it. Any sensors that I add to this remote probe is going to be monitored from here, from my house, rather than being at the, at the probe out there in Europe, right? The original hosted system that were installed. That gives me the ability to monitor private IP addresses, whereas the hosted system out there has to come across the internet, so it's going public, right? And you've got the latency from it crossing the ocean and getting to my house here in Arizona, right? So, so back over here, it's, it's installing a few other utilities like NPCAP, which is used for packet capture and things like that. And right now, it's adding itself to the remote PRTG server. Ta-da! It says remote probe is there. Don't forget to approve the remote probe in your PRTG web interface. Okay, that's great. Continue, finish, and now it's there. Now it's as if it didn't happen. It's actually a, a service that's installed. Now look behind here. I'm going to open that web interface back up. Look at the corner. It says, oh, AZ Jeremy's house, training only. A new probe is trying to connect to your PRTG. Okay, sure. Let's approve and auto discover. So I'm going to click on uh, OK. And just like that, oh, Oh, this is such good stuff. Look, so, ah, get, get, later, later, Let's get that guy out of here. Um, so, so hosted probe right there. This is the one, this is the server in Europe. And right here is the probe we just installed. 
it's initially going to start monitoring itself and then it's going, and right now it's, it's literally happening. It's going on an auto, holy cow, look at this. It's going on an auto discover escapade where it's trying to figure out all the different things that I have running inside of my home. That's all I wanna do in this video. I'm gonna let that auto discover run. In the next video, we're gonna come back, see what auto discover did, and then figure out how to tweak it. And I, I'll tell you the, the best practice, I think, uh, that, that you can use with this is using auto discover to initially do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And then you come in and do some of the laser focused tweaks to make this amazing for yourself. So more on that later. At this point, you now know just how simple it is to get PRTG up and running with both a local and remote probe to do all of your monitoring. Keep it simple.